Seems like so many of our fights and struggles in Michigan for the last several years have been about water. Tainted water in Flint, water bursting through the Edenville Dam, controversial water shutoffs, and of course, water backing up on freeways and in basements during torrential storms. Well, the latest water fight involves the Great Lakes Water Authority, or GLIWA. They're trying to spread Highland Park's unpaid water bills among the nearly 90 municipalities under the authority, but around a third of them, and the list keeps growing, are saying, no way. Happy to have with me the interim CEO of the Great Lakes uh, Water Authority, Suzanne Coffey, and the Public Works Commissioner from Macomb County, Candace Miller. Thank you both so much for coming. It's so nice to have people back in person. We're, yes, it it, it yes. won't be novel uh, soon, but right now it still is. So let me start with you. Sure. Um, we, some folks are starting to describe this as a little bit of a mutiny. I think you take issue with that description, but describe what's going on right now. Yeah, so I, I don't see it necessarily as a mutiny. I, I really see us rallying around to try to raise awareness on an issue that needs to be solved, right? So uh, we, we need a resolution to it, and I see that people are frustrated, and I understand that frustration. So uh, from our perspective, raising awareness, uh, I wish it didn't have to be quite so controversial, but the reality is raising awareness is gonna help us to get the problem solved. Well, it's certainly raising awareness among, uh, among the citizenry, mm -hmm. but the folks who are involved, like Candace Miller, are maybe a little too aware, or, or do you think that, they, that, that the folks that are the stakeholders, uh, the leaders of these uh, municipalities don't fully understand it yet? You know, I think they do understand it now, frankly. I, I think that uh, it's taken a bit to get that education out there, but I think they understand it. Mm. Uh, actually, it's a, it's a complex matter, and I think they've taken the time that's needed to understand it very well. Uh, uh, Candace Miller, you were part of the group that we heard in Macomb County this past week at a news conference. Um, you've been joined at quite a few communities in uh, Wayne County, most recently a big group of downriver communities. Is it a mutiny? <laughs> you know what it is. First of all, I think it's important to note this is not the Great Lakes Water Authority's fault. Oh, really. no, no, no. We, sure. we are part of the Great Lakes Water Authority. Everybody doesn't know that, but it came out of the bankruptcy. So you've got this whole region, really, mm -hmm. are mm -hmm. members of the Great Lakes Water Authority. So we're sort of all in this problem together, which was started in 2012 by the state, actually, who at that time made GLIWA take on Highland Park, right. who previously were on their own with water and sewer, but they had a water plant that wasn't it was junk okay yeah, yes, and it's even yes. worse now it needs to be bulldozed it's never going to be fixed and they've been but, moved off of the system again since then yes. but by the way let me quickly mention we did invite uh, leadership from Highland Park to be here I, I, I believe lawyers intervened and suggested that, that might not be those the darn right. attorneys Take, dar yeah. they, they ruined more episodes of flashback yeah, let me tell yeah. you. but so so what is the best approach because I think some people would suggest look you're a part of a consortium and for better or worse uh, the debts are everybody's they are, but what we're trying to do is force the state to engage, quite frankly. This whole issue, in my opinion, million opinions out there, in my opinion, was really caused by the state by forcing Gleawa to take on Highland Park. Highland Park, over these last 10 years, has paid some of their bills, but not enough. And actually, they haven't paid any bill for the last year. If you don't pay your water bill, guess what happens? Uh, they shut your water off. Mm -hmm. I think we have to be careful about that. We can't be shutting off water to an entire community nine, 10,000 yeah, people. Yeah. I mean, they're children, they're babies, okay? We're not talking about that, but we want the state to engage, sit everybody down at the table, we have to resolve this issue, because we are not going to continue, we being any of the GLIWA members, continue to pay for Highland Parks, taking advantage of their neighbors. Your thoughts then, Sue? So no, I, I completely agree that it's, it's a very frustrating situation, right? We do have to make sure that we're providing that high quality water to all of our member partners, and we are a consortium. And I, that's why I said I do think that this is really about us all coming together to get that awareness. I do think the state can help us to solve this problem. I think Highland Park wants this problem solved. I think we want this problem solved. We all do. So that's one thing we have in common. Interesting. The governor, through a spokesman this week, said, uh, you guys need to figure that out. Now, I couldn't figure out who, what, wh who that meant. Did that mean Lansing? Did that mean a legislative approach? Or did that mean it people like... It was the like attorney, probably, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was. The, it was. <laughs> I knew who it was. It was the attorney saying that. By the way, he was saying, you guys, they are one of you guys because part the governor of has an appointee uh -huh. on the GLIWA in the, in, the, in the state, not this particular governor, but it's, it's now on her watch, unfortunately. But, you know, it has to be dealt with. They have to engage. So they are part of the you guys. But isn't it kind of, uh, it's funny that we're, we've been watching this debate on the international stage about NATO membership. Isn't this a situation where you're all members of this same group, the bills come due, everybody's liable for them? 
Yeah, except the state. They don't actually get billed, right? Even though they have a, a dog in the hunt, so to speak. You know, the governor does have an appointee on GLEWA. I mean, they don't actually get billed. Mm -hmm. We don't bill the state of Michigan, but we're billing everybody else. So we're, what we've said in Macomb, and this is really what all the communities are doing now, most of them, and I think uh, some of the, the other counties that haven't probably will be next, uh, we're just asking that our member communities withhold a portion of their water and sewer bills that would be paying for the Highland Park section. We obviously can't withhold all of our bills. We're really hurting ourselves. Bond ratings, other kinds of things. We're aware of that, but we have to bring this to a head. Uh, folks are like, look, I work hard, I pay my bill. What is this with Highland Park? Yeah, I, th I think the real, the real idea here is the state can help us come together. If we could have solved this with Highland Park, would be solved by now. Right, it's multiple lawsuits. Does it muddy the picture that they're not really a part of it anymore? I mean, they're, the, the debt is still there. I guess they are a part of it that way. So, so when you say they are not a part of it, meaning? Of the water system anymore. Haven't they moved, they've moved. Highland Park? Didn't they move their water, uh, their, their water was, because it was found to be cloudy. Oh the, yeah, we're providing water to them. So, so yeah, that's it, the matter. The matter is, they, yes. yeah, their water treatment plant is not functional right, right now, right? So they'd ask us to come in and, and so we are, their residents are drinking Great Lakes Water Authority water, right? That's the issue. Yeah. That's the issue yeah. is that we have affordability issues. Everyone's concerned about that. It's an equity issue as well. Mm -hmm. And the reality is people need to pay for the service that they're receiving. That's the issue. And we need the state to come in and help. It's been going on way too long, as, as Candace had said, right? This is coming up on 10 years ago. Yeah, it's 10 it's, years. It'll be 10 years in November, right? We have, have filed the lawsuits. We're working through the courts. But the reality is we need a good solution that works for Highland Park, that works for GLWA, and doesn't put it on the backs of the others. And we are looking at talking about all these lawsuits that have been going on for the last 10 years. In Macomb, we've engaged our legal counsel, and uh, we are going to be filing an amicus brief on one of the mm -hmm. lawsuits. Mm -hmm. We are going to be intervening on another lawsuit. We're contemplating the option of actually suing Highland Park ourselves or suing the state ourselves. Uh, none of which, which we want to do, right? Which is why go figure this yeah, out. Yeah, go figure this right? out. Yeah, well, we could figure it out, but we need the state to sort of be the, uh, yeah. uh, to be, uh, they do have a seat at the table, you know, so they need to sit at the table. Our last couple of minutes, I'd like to broaden the conversation. We just saw this massive uh, uh, infrastructure package pass in Lansing. A lot of this is one-time money, which needs to be spent in a different way, I think. Uh, clearly, infrastructure, there's, there's a lot of different places, especially roads that get all of the, uh, a lot of the headlines, mm -hmm. but water because I just mentioned how many different problems we have with water right now. Right. Uh, what kind of opportunity we have in front of us and what do we need to do? Well, I can only speak for Macomb County and I know Great, Great Lakes Water Authority also got some cash, but we got $72 million out of this mm -hmm. last bill. Mm -hmm. It is for projects that are one-time transformational projects, which was really the intent, I think, of these federal dollars. Right. So just quickly, of a, you know, maintenance, a couple right. of projects on our sewer interceptor. I've got a couple of projects to stop combined sewer overflows from uh, spoiling our magnificent Great Lakes. I have a, a new pump station that we're building at a pump uh, station that has not had a new pump since 1968. Does it so, feel, what you're talking about, does it feel transformational or absolutely. does it feel like you need more? Well, you always need more. Always. I mean, I have lots of other projects, but uh, you know, this is a huge down payment and uh, I'm very appreciative of it. Your thoughts on yeah, it? Yeah, so we, we received 25 million, right? Mm -hmm. Very, very appreciative of that, but we have huge needs, right? I think uh, we certainly have been under investing in our water infrastructure. Mm -hmm. We look at roads, we can see roads, we know that roads need help. Under the ground, water pipes, wastewater pipes, drainage pipes. There's three networks of pipes that are under all those roads. And we have infrastructure that's 100 plus years old. So $25 million is great. It's a great start, right? And we're happy to have that. But we spend about $200 million in capital improvements a year. One of our pump stations, we have two pump stations we're upgrading that were built in uh, the 1920s, the 1930s, $250 million to upgrade those pump stations. So on the regional side, we're happy it's coming, we need more. It's amazing how fast $3 billion can go when you're yeah. starting to talk about infrastructure. And I'm curious, you spent a lot of time in Congress where you were constantly you being to told- me of that, right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't hold it against me. <laughs> PTSD a little bit yeah, from right. there. But it, you were constantly being besieged with you know infrastructure talk, uh, demands, requests. Now you're on this side of it. Does Congress have a clue? Uh, do members of Congress really get 
the infrastructure problems in America. I think what members of Congress need to do is listen to their local officials that are involved in mm -hmm. the infrastructure and try to figure it out from there. I mean, you can't be an expert on everything, but you have to uh, uh, have a high degree of confidence in what your local leaders are telling you. Yeah. And I will say one thing, also how you spend this money. Don't rat hole it. So we invite the state to come in and audit us. The feds want to mm -hmm. come in and mm -hmm. audit us. Everything is up on our website. Transparency, accountability, always. I so appreciate you both coming today.